Joining me now is Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. He was the Republican leader of the last bipartisan effort in Congress uh, in an attempt to reform gun laws. It, of course, didn't pass. Senator Toomey, welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Morning, Chuck. Thanks for having me. Let me start with uh, your bill and what we uh, know about the shooter down in South Florida. There was a lot of information the school system had. There was a lot of information um, that were called into authorities about the mental stability or instability of this young man. Right. But there's no part of the law that would have mandated that information make it into the background check system. How would your bill deal with that? Uh, it wouldn't. You know, the, the fact is the bill that Joe Manchin and I introduced and that we still support, uh, Chuck, it's not going to solve all problems, and we never suggest that it would. And one of the challenges that we face is what to do about someone who's clearly mentally deranged, but they haven't acted out yet in a way that allows you to adjudicate them as dangerously mentally ill or they haven't committed a crime. Clearly, in this case, there were all kinds of warning signs that were they were advertised, right? They were communicated right. and nothing was done. That's a problem. I think there's a, an important discussion to be had about a temporary restraining order on somebody who's uh, evidencing some serious uh, dangerous behavior. There'd have to be due process right. so that that couldn't be used as a weapon against someone uh, inappropriately. Uh, but uh, look, our legislation I think would be very constructive. I still support it, but I'm not gonna suggest it would solve all problems. No, I understand that. I, I guess the, the question then is, should school uh, information be temporarily put in the system? So, for instance, he was expelled. Does the fact that he was expelled, do you put that in the system, say, for a five-year period so that, you know, he could be caught in the system an extra, maybe an extra interview by the FBI or an extra interview by authorities if he attempts to purchase a weapon? Yeah, I'm not sure that expulsion from school is uh, sufficient. Uh, I imagine there could be all kinds of cheating on a test, for instance. Sure. I don't know what kind of circumstances might co cause an expulsion that really doesn't suggest that this is a dangerous person uh, who shouldn't have a Second Amendment right. So uh, I'm not sure that's the right criteria. But look, we, the problem is we have a lot of gun sales in America today for which there's no background check whatsoever. Uh, and this is one of the things that Senator Manchin and I are trying to address let's at least require a background check for all commercial sales. That's what our legislation attempts to do uh, by requiring background checks at sales at gun shows or over the internet. Um, we'd also, our legislation would encourage states to provide the information to the background check system so that the information would be there. And we also create a commission to study right. this kind of, these, these massacres, this mass violence. I, I think it's overdue, and I still hope right. uh, we can succeed with another run at it. Senator uh, John Cornyn, a Republic, number two Republican in the Senate, he has a fix nix bill. He says right. basically, he's in hinting that whether it's your measure or even something that the president wants to put out there, raising the age uh, on getting an assault weapon uh, to 21, that it doesn't have the votes in the Senate. Is he right? Does your bill not have the 60 votes? We don't know the answer to that, Chuck. Uh, I've spent uh, a lot of hours on the phone and uh, communicating in other ways with my colleagues this week. Uh, I do think there are some members who were not supportive in the past who are reconsidering. I haven't got anyone who said, yes, sign me up, Pat. Right. Uh, but there are definitely members who are reconsidering. The president's expression of support for strengthening our background check system is very constructive. The president can play a huge and, in right. fact, probably decisive role in this. So I, I intend to give this another shot. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, on, in a, on the idea of raising the age on assault weapons from 18 to 21, are you personally uh, supportive of that? Uh, I'm very skeptical about that because the vast majority of 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds are law abiding citizens who aren't a threat to anyone. So uh, I'm, I'm skeptical about that. I, I, I'm willing to hear the other side on this. but. Uh, Mm, I'm skeptical. I go, what about the AR-15 specifically? I mean, is there an argument to be made that something that powerful, um, you know, so, could, you could make you know, an exception <laughs> for some hunting rifles, but that one, that powerful? Here's the problem, Chuck. There's a lot of hunting rifles that are as powerful as an AR-15. The difference between the AR-15 and an awful lot of commonly sold uh, rifles is just cosmetic. You know, it's got, a, it's got a grip under the barrel and it's painted black. Uh, that, is, uh, that doesn't change its uh, lethality. I want to ask you about the failures of law enforcement down in South Florida. Failures, whether it's the FBI, the Broward County Sheriff's Office. Does that, in your mind, 
reinforce the notion that the background check system needs to be fixed? We need another fail safe because you can't always count on law enforcement to be there. Or does that reinforce this notion that more people need to be armed? Um, these are not mutually exclusive, Chuck. I think uh, this is a case where an armed guard appears to have really, really failed to do his job as best that, that we know so far. I think we need an investigation on that. But certainly, I don't think that would be the typical response of an armed guard, and it certainly is not the typical response of law enforcement and the trained first responders we have all over the country. So I think having properly trained, capable people uh, in uh, vulnerable settings will enhance security. But I still believe that we absolutely should tighten up our background check system. So I think both are, uh, uh, you know, sensible steps. You're open to arm, uh, having some teachers be armed? Under some circumstances, I'd leave it to the individual school districts in the mm -hmm. states. I will tell you in Pennsylvania, there are school districts where there are a number of teachers who are extensively trained. They are ex-military. They would be comfortable and they would be, it would be suitable. I certainly wouldn't impose it on a school that didn't wish to do that. I want to get you to respond to something that uh, the NRA's Wayne LaPierre said in a speech over the weekend. Here it is. The elites don't care not one whit about America's school system. This growing socialist state dreams of manipulating school children to squeeze and squeeze information about their parents. I sense your anxiety. And you should be anxious. And you should be frightened. You think the NRA has been playing a constructive role this week? Uh, this is the first I've heard, and I don't know what else uh, Wayne LaPierre said, so uh, that um, strikes me as a little bit conspiratorial in its tone, uh, but again, I don't have it in the, in the full context. But I, I guess overall, I mean, the, there's been this a boycott that has, has gotten traction, and, um, you know, the NRA seems to be more defiant than wanting to talk about um, the fact that, hey, a lot of people want to have a different conversation on guns. Look, I, I mean, I disagree with the NRA on this position. The NRA once held the position that I held, which is that background checks at gun sales and, uh, and any kind of commercial sale are appropriate. The NRA changed its position on that. I disagree with them. I think it'd be terrific if the NRA would come back to where it once was, and that would be very constructive. Uh, finally, have you been guaranteed that your bill's going to get a vote? No, I, you know, I'll be speaking with uh, Senator McConnell about, about that uh, this week. Uh, you know, uh, time on the Senate schedule is precious, especially with our Democratic colleagues chewing so right. much of it up over non-controversial nominees. Uh, but if we've got uh, 60 votes, then um, I think that'd be a very compelling argument to have a vote. And I think, I think we would. All right. Senator Pat Toomey, Republican from Pennsylvania. Thanks for coming on and sharing your views. Much appreciated. Thanks, Chuck. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.